Hello and welcome to my channel. The Danish Data Museum is like part of the Danish Society for Computer History. We have just been given some new facilities which we are going to use to display our collection. And that's a pretty nice collection if I have to say so myself. The museum is not open for the public yet but will very soon be. So I have prepared this little sneak peek for you so you can see what you can expect when we open for real. But before we get started, will you please do me the favor of subscribing to my channel, maybe like this video and drop a comment down below. That would make me so happy. And while you do that, I will run the intro. Yeah! This is the new facilities of the Danish Data Museum. I'm gonna start this tour by showing you our digitalization workshop. Follow me. This is a room we use to scan and convert different kinds of medias. For instance, we use our disk conversion system over here to read old tapes and old floppies. And we have our scanner set up right here, which we use to scan documents and manuals and magazines. This is a document scanner that can scan a lot of documents insanely fast, fully automated. It is super nice to work with. Over here we have an A3 scanner, which is perfect for scanning old magazines. And in the end over here, we plan to expand the, this whole thing by adding a small photo studio here so we can take pictures of things like small circuit boards and, and smaller computers um, with uh, some decent kind of quality. But that is this is interesting and all and I'm most certainly gonna make a lot of videos about what happens in here. But for now I think we shall go and have a look at the collection which is a really exciting part. Come along. This room is dedicated to the prehistoric age of computing, meaning what did we do before computers? And to be honest, I don't know much about what's in this room, but I'm gonna have to learn it because I will be giving tours in here. So yeah, I guess there's a lot of learning to do and a lot of videos to make. This next room is dedicated to the first generation of hand-built computers. What you see here is actually some of the surviving parts of the first ever built Danish computer. Obviously, it's not working. Uh, the whole computer was built into a whole house. So it simply doesn't exist anymore. However, we do have a complete running version of the second Danish computer called the Gear. That machine is also a bit too big to be in these facilities, so we have an emulator. This room is like the rest of this museum, a work in progress. So to be honest, there's not that much more to talk about in here. In the next room, however, we are going to build a computer room consisting of third and fourth generation of like mainframe-ish computers. And that is gonna be so awesome. Come and have a look. And this is gonna be a theme of this video. I'm gonna say this a lot. This room is a work in progress. If you look at the floor, there are markings for some different machines we're gonna put up, but they're only markings. Uh, this room is a bit out of my league. I don't fully understand all these machines. It maybe look like some kind of modern East machine, but it is still using punch card tapes and punch cards to load mostly software on the tape and data from the, from, from the cards. I don't know how to overrate them. I will hopefully learn it someday. That will make a great video for you guys and it will probably be helpful if I'm going to show people around at the museum. Um, but to be honest, I work most with the micro-based computers, meaning uh, the computers that mainly 
uh, runs on microprocessors and that is what we're going to have a look at in the next room. Follow me. In this room we're trying to illustrate how computer science was taught in Denmark in the 70s and the 80s. And we do that by showcasing some of the machines that were typically used for that. This is the Picolini, a Z80 based machine from 1980. Actually the first prototype was made in 1979, but only about 50 pieces were released back then, so they're very rare. This is the most used, used model. Next to it, there's this Swedish built computer, the ABC80 from 1978, I think. Also a very widely used machine and it was actually used all the way up in the 2000s for controlling um, um, power plants and, and, and water uh, treating facilities because it was so insanely robust made. This is the, the Butler, which also is a Danish built computer. It's a little bit later, that's from the 1980s, so that is more one or two years older than the Piccolo. The next machine is made from the same company who made the Piccolo called Reinesentralen, which is also the same company who made some of the big machines we saw in the other room. This is a 16-bit computer built on the Intel 8186 processor. Um, it's not dust compatible, which is most likely the reason why it, it's, yeah. It didn't flunk, but but I mean, they only sold a couple of thousands of them and IBM com came in and took the market over a few years after, so yeah. It's, it's, it's a thing, but it could have been better. And yeah, we have a couple of Commodore 64s and yeah, it wasn't really interesting. But in this room in general, we want to show how we actually taught kids in schools back then how to code. The next room is, yeah, I don't know if you're gonna see that, but um, yeah, it has something to do with teaching at least. Let's go and have a look. This is our lecture room. And that is just a place where we can have events and workshops, which could be so awesome to have like uh, people from back then come in here and speak about how they work with the computers back then, or have some of us who works with them now tell, up, uh, tell, tell stories about how we repair them and how we get them to work again. Uh, we really have wanted to have a space for that for so long time and we have that now. And we have a room. Of course we have to display something in that room. If you look over here, we have a control board from the Gear computer, which was the second Danish computer I talked about just before. Uh, on this table, we have a, a Piccolo. I just mentioned that like before uh, in the, the, the room we just left. Uh, and the pride of this room, at least, is this machine. I don't know if you know the Danish computer game called Hugo. It was very popular in the 80s. It was a game with a little troll you could play on television and you could win prizes. And that was so popular that it was actually exported to most of Europe. And the machine used to play this game on the television looks like this. This is actually um, um, a, 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 a complete game that could be hooked up to the phone and to the, to the television. And you could uh, sit at home and watch the television show and play the game with the number pad on your phone. This works. I don't know how to use it, but I'm gonna learn and I'm gonna make a really awesome video where I can show you guys how that was done. Because I think this is a really, really, really cool machine. Speaking of cool machines, we have some Apple computers. A lot of Macintoshes, which, okay. We can have them, but we also have a couple of Apple IIs, and those are the really interesting machines. You want to see them? Okay, come along. This is the room where we display all our Apple computers, but the only interesting thing here is this beauty. Isn't that just beautiful? Okay, that was it downstairs. Let's go upstairs. This is our library. A library is a place where you store books. We have a lot of books and only a few on display. So uh, yeah, I think we have like 10 times what is here. So um, there will be some work in selecting exactly what we are going to put on display. Talking about display, in this corner, 
we are trying to make a small exhibition that will like show the impact that the microprocessor had on this industry. So like we had this microprocessor and suddenly you could make a calculator that would fit in your pocket and, and you could make like uh, computer controlled cassette players and and I mean I, I don't understand the full transition and I'm not the right guy to design this exhibition but I think it's fascinating and at some point when I understand it fully I so much want to 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 make a video about about this story because this is really interesting yeah let's move on in this room we have a workshop and it's like workshops are the most we have a ESD safe table some soldering irons and uh, measuring equipment uh, there's a workstation more that's not ESD so I don't know what you will use that for you have like a, a, a workbench for like more rough jobs like mechanical work and then you have this really beautiful component wall I mean I thought I had a huge component wall at my studio but but this is like like yeah okay that was empty of course that one is not empty I mean this is just so beautiful crystals uh, potential meters I think uh, different EPROMs different um, um, uh, integrated circuits this is a 7400 logic and yeah this is so so cool but come on it's 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 a workshop that's they all look the same Let, let's let's go on come with me this is the room we're gonna call micro one uh we can start over here this is another piccolo machine the one i showed you before was a 702 this is actually the 703 and and that is that is almost as different uh, from the previous one that it should actually be considered a machine by itself you need special software to run on that it doesn't run the same software and but yeah it was the last piccolo before the transition to 16-bit uh, oh here we have a nascom i don't know much about the nascom but i'm actually right now restoring a, a magazine the danish uh, user magazine for the nascom user group so there will most likely be some some kind of video about that at some point and now that i know we have one of these of course i'm gonna try it out and maybe make a little video about it if it works i don't know this is a dde computer uh, also danish built that is a micro computer but it's not a personal micro computer it's like a multi-user system so it's like a mini micro mainframe something it's an interesting piece of kit I don't know if this one works, but if it does, I'm so much gonna make a video about it because that's a cool machine. Uh, they have their own operating system called Miketas. N know nothing about it, but hey, I'm here to learn. An IBM XT and an AT and some Sun um, hardware that I don't know that much about. Well, I have had a couple of those myself, but I don't know what's the meaning about having them here. I guess I need to figure that out before I start showing people around. The Comet 3400. As many of you know, this is a machine that I'm currently working on a book about. The next one is the James computer, also a Danish built Z80 based microcomputer. Um, I am not gonna write a book about that, but I'm gonna put a chapter about this in my upcoming book, because this is also an interesting history. It's not interesting enough that it, it runs a book of itself, but I'm, I'm working on it as well right now, and this is actually a, an Intel uh, based um, uh, uh, follow-up machine to this one, uh, the James 800. Um, and the cool thing about this is that it actually has a UPS built-in, so in case of power failure, you can still save your work and turn off the machine and, and don't lose anything. That's a cool piece of kit. And I guess that was it for this room, but we have another room for microcomputers. Let's go in and check that out, follow me. This is Micro 2 and there are some uh, work desks in here so that us volunteers will have a place to, to work and also we have a little bit of exhibition. One of the most cool part of this of our collection is this Commodore 900 which is a Unix based Commodore uh, machine. Um, it wasn't that popular, well it, I actually think it was cancelled. There are about 9 models left in the world 
And as far as I know, it never got past the prototype uh, stadium, but, but we have one and it's working. Oh, well, actually, I think the keyboard is broken. There are some, uh, there's an EEPROM in the keyboard that needs something, something. Some of the more uh, uh, nerdy guys than me are working on fixing that. Um, yeah. This is not really ready to show yet, but there are room for some more exhibition here, but, but those shelves are empty. We will have some storage space for like our own personal projects or our ongoing work. But yeah, we are more or less um, through the collection. We have a lot more in our remote warehouse, but right now we are, we don't want to overfill this place. So um, yeah. Well, let's, um, let's end this video by going out here and saying that I'm looking so much forward to use this awesome space to bring you a lot of great content. Don't forget to stop by on our opening date and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more awesome content. Like this video, leave a comment down below and then I guess I see you out there in the dark corners of the interwebs. Thank you so much for the view. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel for more awesome retro content. If you wish to support this channel, you are very welcome to do so directly through Patreon or Tenor app or by purchasing some of our merchandise. That helps a lot. Finally, you can also support us by simply watching a lot of our videos and by getting your friends to do the same.